Late Saturday night, Iran directly attacked Israel for the first time, launching over 200 drones, cruise missiles, and surface-to-surface missiles. Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari, the spokesperson of the Israel Defense Forces, or the IDF, said that a majority of the airstrikes were intercepted and that one minor was injured. The Iranian airstrikes were a retaliation to an Israeli attack on its diplomatic compound in Damascus, Syria, on the 1st of April, 2024. Hello and welcome to The Print. My name is Keshav Padmanabhan, and today I will explain the current situation engulfing the region. After the militant outfit Hamas launched its attacks against Israel on 7th October, tensions between Tel Aviv and Tehran increased. Iran is known to have supported a range of outfits across the region, including Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad in Gaza, the Hezbollah in Lebanon, and a range of militias in Syria and the Houthis in Yemen. For years, Israel and Iran have conducted proxy campaigns against one another, with Tel Aviv allegedly carrying out assassinations and strikes against Iranian military commanders and scientists. On 1st April 2024, targeted strikes hit the Iran's consulate in Damascus, a diplomatic building, which killed two senior commanders of its Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, or the IRGC, and at least six other officers of the IRGC. The two senior commanders killed were Brigadier General Mohammad Hadi Haj Rahimi and Brigadier General Mohammad Reza Zahedi. Zahedi has long been involved in Iran's point person in Lebanon and Syria. In 2010, the US Treasury Department sanctioned Zahedi and noted that he plays a key role in Iran's support to Hezbollah. The Secretary General of Hezbollah, Syed Hassan Nasrallah, commented on the killing of Zahedi, acknowledging him as the head of Iranian advisors in Lebanon and Syria, according to Iranian local media. Iran promised to avenge the killings of their senior IRGC officials by Israel. It must be noted that as is practice, Tel Aviv did not claim responsibility for the attack on the Iranian diplomatic compound in Syria on the 1st of April. Iran's first major retaliation was seen Saturday evening when a Portuguese-flagged container ship, the MSC Aris, with 17 Indian crew members, was seized by the IRGC Navy. The ship was en route to Jawaharlal Nehru port in Navi Mumbai from the Khalifa port in the United Arab Emirates. The MSC Aris is reported to be owned by companies affiliated with Zodiac Maritime, a company part of the Zodiac Group, which is owned by Israeli born and Monaco-based billionaire Ayal Ofer. Sources in the government told the print that New Delhi is in touch with Tehran through diplomatic channels for the early return of the Indian crew members. The MSC Aries was seized in the Persian Gulf, which is connected to the Gulf of Oman in the east by the Strait of Hormuz. The Strait of Hormuz, according to the U.S. Department of Energy, is the world's most important oil transit choke point. 21% of global petroleum liquids consumption passed through the strait in 2022. More than one quarter of total global seaborne traded oil and one-fifth of global liquefied natural gas trade transited the Strait of Hormuz in 2022. Iran earlier last week threatened to close the Strait of Hormuz in retaliation for the airstrike on its diplomatic compound in Damascus, Syria. Late Saturday evening, Iran launched its retaliation against Israel in a post on the social media platform X by the Iranian permanent representative to the United Nations. Tehran deemed its retaliation against Israel as concluded. In a letter to the UN Secretary General and the President of the United Nations Security Council, Iran said that its actions were an exercise of Tehran's right to self-defense, as outlined in Article 51 of the Charter of the United Nations. Various nations, including the US, the UK, Canada, Australia, France, and the European Union, condemned Iran's retaliatory actions. President Joseph R. Biden Jr., 
of the U.S. announced that the U.S. will stand with Israel and that their partnership is ironclad. The Israel Foreign Ministry confirmed that it sought a U.N. Security Council meeting for Sunday and the designation of the IRGC as a terrorist organization. President Biden also announced that the U.S. will be convening a meeting among the leaders of the Group of Seven or the G7 members on Sunday to coordinate a united diplomatic response to Tehran's retaliatory strikes. India called for the de-escalation of the situation, the exercise of restraint, and for the return to the path of diplomacy. On Friday, the Indian Ministry of External Affairs also put out a travel advisory urging citizens to not travel to Israel and Iran. There are about 18,000 Indians in Israel and 10,000 Indians in Iran. According to real-time flight tracking systems, the airspace around Israel, Iraq, Jordan, Lebanon, and Iran was closed late Saturday evening. Various Indian air carriers, including Air India and Vistara, announced it will be traveling westwards using alternate routes. That is all from me today. Do subscribe to The Print for more such news and analysis. Thank you.